Duco is a very bad boy. Has the ear of Bonaparte himself. Where Duco rides, dirty work is sure to follow. He's scouting for an attack in the north. I can smell it. Well, we can't be sure of that, sir. And in the meantime, we have Lady Farthingdale to worry about. <laughs> Wellington's tent at six. Spit and polish for Sir Augustus Farthingdale. He'll want a full written report, Sharp. Lancers? No. Rocket troops, sir. Yeah, I know that. But they look like lancers. Could even call them cavalry to pinch. Well, in a bad light. Lancers? No, sir, I really must protest. We are the rocket troop, not cavalry men. Lancers. That's not what the rocket troop is trained to do, sir. What we do best is shoot rockets. Would you like to watch us have another go at that barn, sir? No. Well, we almost hit it this morning, and I have one ready. Primed and aimed at myself, sir. All ready to go. Stand by! No! Fuse! Hey! No! No! Oh, dear. Does that mean you'll not be able to find a use for us, Mr. Sharp? Oh, I'll find a use for you, Mr. Gillian. Don't you worry about that. Rocket troop! Reload! So, you failed, Sharp. That failure was no fault of Sharp's, Colonel Farthingdale. I wish I could be assured, my lord. The fact is that Sharp was sent for my wife, and my wife is not here. And the court in Lisbon will want to know why. This is a very shoddy affair, sir. And I shall hold you personally responsible. We may both be held responsible sooner than you think, Sir Augustus. Not merely for losing your wife, but for losing Spain. But what do you mean, sir? Agent Anne. I want to make three points, Sir Augustus. First, about the Dravis. We thought we were dealing with a bunch of desperados, but from what Sharp reports, we're dealing with a small army, many in British uniform, murdering the Spanish inhabitants. This threatens our alliance with Spain. Second, can you imagine what this will do to the morale of our troops coming up to a cold Christmas? A scuttlebutt tells you there's a Garden of Eden up in the hills, good food, good grog, no foot drill or flogging. Wouldn't you say, well, I'd be damned to it and desert? I know I would. Disciplined troops desert, sir. Nonsense. Don't be a damn fool, sir. Discipline is only a rabble-rouser shout from anarchy, sir. Mark me close, Colonel. What do you think the supreme virtue, sir? To the Frenchman in his recent revolution, it is liberty. To the Whig, puffing in Parliament, it is licensed to do anything provided do not disturb his pleasure. But to the common soldier, it is anarchy. To do whatever he please and be damned to his fellow. But to me and Bonaparte, the supreme virtue is order. We are not Whigs. We know that a man may love his neighbor of a Monday and massacre him of a Tuesday unless society keeps him in order. These deserters, if not secured and shot, will destroy my army more surely than Bonaparte. And I'll thank you not to forget it. You have a third point, now. Third, Sharp reports that Colonel Dupleton told him he was being advised by a Major Duco. <laughs> Duco is a very bad hat, Sir Augustus. Now, how do you know? Why, he's in the same line of work as me, sir. But why should Dupleton warn you about Duco? Dupleton is torn between his country and his wife. He would not betray France, but he fears Duco may attack Adridos without regard to his wife's safety. We think Duco was scouting not for an attack, but for an invasion. An invasion? They could send a strong force to take Adradas as if they were merely dealing with the deserters. But I think they mean to hold on to Adradas and use it as a funnel to pour their army into Portugal. 
Yes, but if the French attack the, the deserters, we'll, uh, we'll kill the hostages. Duco doesn't give a damn about the hostages. We need to take a Dradus before he does. But if we send in a strong force, the deserters will kill your wife. Oh, I'm sorry, Sir Augustus. It's not your fault, but human nature being what it is and not what the weaks think it is, you must expect to shoulder some of the blame for this back in London. You know the kind of thing they'll say. How did that damn fellow Farthingdale allow his wife to be kidnapped in the first place? That kind of thing. You, <laughs> you follow me, don't you, sir? What do you suggest, my lord? Sharp is the one with the suggestion. He has put forward a rescue plan that is foolhardy and certainly not for the faint-hearted. But it might do. Well, how do we know the women are in the convent? Colonel Dubreton's wife is English. When asked how she was, she replied, Withering in my bloom, lost in solitary gloom. It's from a poem by Alexander Pope called Eloise and Abelard. Now warm in love, now withering in thy bloom, lost in a convent's solitary gloom. It's beautiful. The shepherds told me the convent means the upper balcony. It's where the nuns used to sleep. Now, if we can hold the balcony, well-armed and with plenty of ammunition, we can secure the women's safety until the crack company arrives. And, of course, you will be following close behind with the main rescue party, Sir Augustus. <clears throat> yes, well, naturally, I shall be leading the regimental rescue. I don't see a role for you, Sharp. A detachment cannot be led by a captain. It must have a major in command. Rule. May I have your word that you will support fully the Major in command of the detachment? Absolutely, sir. Major Nan, read that letter from the Prince Regent in respect of Captain Sharp. Prince Regent? It seems Sharp has friends at court too, Colonel. Though in London, not in Lisbon. Seems the Prince Regent read all about Sharp taking that eagle at Televera and has followed his career since. Read it, Nan. George III. By the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, King, Defender of the Faith, etc., 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 to our trusty and well-beloved Richard Sharp Esquire, greeting. We do by these presents constitute and appoint you to be major in our army now in Portugal and Spain and blah, 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 blah. Congratulations, Major Sharp. And, of course, as Major, you may now command the detachment. All in order now, Colonel? Well, of course, it's not my place to question the judgment of the Prince Regent. All I do know is that the Major here, who is in charge of a complex and combined operation...